After the hecticness that was playing catch up in the first weeks of February, I'm pleased to say the rest of the month was a nice month of enjoying games. Aside from finishing the main game I talked about last month, I received codes for some things I've been excited about, including the sequel to an adorable and addictive series I love, along with one for a story-based game and a rhythm one for a big JRPG series that made for a month that made me swell up with lots of love for games as there are just so many things to play. We can't play everything these days with the amount of stuff coming out, but I'm pretty happy with the things that I could get to, so let's get into the JRPGs I played in February. While I was overwhelmed with things to do towards the end of February, I was still happy when I received a code for The Legends of Heroes Trails to Azure, the sequel to the Lost Trails game I played, Trails from Zero, that promises to continue its story-rich world. As soon as I got into it, I was excited as it really gets into things right where Zero leaves off, with familiar characters greeting me as I jumped in. I also found some small disappointment initially as I realized my decision to get the Switch version for the visuals meant I didn't get any extra dialogue or my stats from my Trails from Zero data as it's on PS4, but I quickly forgot about this as its world sucked me in again, getting me reinvested where we left off in the Lost game and where the story needs to go next as the SSS continues to get to the bottom of the abnormalities in this world. There is more smoothness with the Switch visuals to enjoy as I'd hoped to, and while I still want to stress that the PS4 version is more than playable, it was nice to see what it was like having everything looking as good as it could. I'll have to be more careful the next time I pick up these games, perhaps in Japanese, to make sure to get both Zero and Azure on the same system because if visuals and text logs are something you care about, there are definitely benefits to the Switch version aside from the portability. Aside from version differences, the thing that made me realize I was enjoying this Trills experience a lot was that I was so ready to jump completely into it after my first hour. I have plans to review a different game soon, so I knew my time with Azure would be short, and in spite of this, after getting back into the flow with this S-Crafts, the interesting battle timeline, and meeting talking treasure chests, I felt just like I was back in Zero, ready to move from chapter to chapter again. Again, and I had to really remind myself to save and put it away as I was definitely ready to keep playing in this world. If I didn't have other plans, I'd definitely be diving into its story as I really do want to see what happens in this one, but I'm glad its first hour could show me that I'll feel comfy jumping in the next time I play. I hope everyone is excited for when it comes out on the 14th as it looks like it will be just as enjoyable as Zero and I look forward to when I can get back to it too. Another world I was excited to continue in was Void Terrariums, with two coming out last month and it being another of the games I received. While I didn't manage to get to the English version of its demo that also came out, I did manage to put a little time into the full game, and that time had me excited as the story seems like it's going to explore something bigger. Much like Trails, it picked up right where the last one left off, so if you have the first one, I definitely recommend finishing it with the true ending before getting around to this one if you fully want to appreciate it. I've already done that, so it was fun remembering the more exciting parts of the first one's ending, along with the interesting way it brings new things into its premise, like the state of the terrarium to bring us into this new part of the story. This, along with the levels and many floors that felt smoother than ever to run through with tough little Robbie, made for the fun roguelike JRPG I remembered with a few new randomized skills to play with that I'm ready to get addicted to playing with again. I've heard it's about 25 hours long, so it'll be the thing I focus on before the main thing I plan to play in March, and while I only played a little in February, I'm glad I did as it has me excited to play more as the month continues. The Rhythm Final Ball Line was the first thing I played after pulling my head out of Fire Emblem as I looked for a relaxing experience, and I'm pleased to say it was exactly what I wanted it to be, with the great music of Final Fantasy being the perfect backdrop to a fun rhythm game experience. I was actually super happy with the controls too, which might be a surprise to some, as from what I've seen, they've been a little hit or miss. I love the rhythm game Bang Dream, and the control scheme is actually quite similar to how its Switch version plays if you use the controller mode, so this let me feel like I could pick out Theater Rhythm's controls with no real learning curve at all, and enjoy what felt like new mechanics to me like the diagonal flicks and wavy notes as I enjoyed playing with some great music. I had a great time remembering the tracks I loved from 7 and 13 so far, and I'm also excited to hear more great songs as I continue, but so far, it's a fun celebration of Final Fantasy music that shouldn't be missed by fans of rhythm games and the series, as I think it's a perfect marriage of the two. I can see myself easily putting a bunch of time into this, so maybe we'll see me review it in full at some point. I'll have to to find somewhere to balance it between the rhythm games and JRPGs I usually play, but with how fun my time was with it, it's definitely given me a desire to do so, so I definitely look forward to playing and celebrating this series' fantastic music through play again soon. 
In the last JRPGs I played, I said I wondered which smaller experiences would creep into my February, and almost as soon as I said it, I realized probably not many, as I had all the things I just talked about here sitting waiting for me, and was even likely to skip things like Blue Reflection Sun to avoid getting overwhelmed. Except, I'm still me, and I can't resist certain things like the game I just mentioned, so while I kept the number of smaller experiences I played to a minimum, I did fit in a few things that added some variety to my month. Blue Reflection Sun has stayed in my mind, and my smart phone since as soon as it came out, and one day on my way from work in the period after finishing JRPGs I played in January, I finally decided to cave and play a little, which wasn't that much as it has a fairly big opening sequence, but it did give me a small look into this new Blue Reflection world. I was able to enjoy the beautiful character illustrations by Atelier Arlen's illustrator Mel Kishida, and was also already able to reunite with some of my Blue Reflection favorites, so while I'm very much at the start, it seems like it'll have more of the soft magical girl vibes I love from the series and with it already filling in some blanks between the story of 1 and 2, I hope to get some time to keep going in it soon. As for other small experiences, I did also try Void Terrarium 2's promotional browser game, which is where you need to keep Toriko alive through a series of choice events. It's very simple and Tamagotchi inspired, just like the main game, and served as a good reminder to me of that side of Void and the weird and wonderful diseases that await you and poor little Toriko in it. I'll leave a link to it in the description for those who want to try it, as it is a good way to get a small taste of the world, and I really liked it as a small experience that helped raise my excitement for the game. The final thing I haven't mentioned is Fire Emblem Engage, which I wouldn't exactly call a small experience, but last month was when I finished it, so it was the final part of my time with it. My February time in it was very much focused on finishing, as I knew I had stuff to do, and while I was enjoying it, I was also feeling this weird guilt around my decision not to do all the Somniel stuff every chapter, so I thought it best to finish it so I could start a slower playthrough and to enjoy the rest of my time with it. I'm ultimately glad I played like this as I really enjoyed its ending and it felt like a good end to my big dive into the series that was a nice cherry on top of everything. I think I'm still recovering from that Somniel burnout though so I haven't come back to it since and can say that after playing other games this month it helped me confirm that it wasn't just my mindset at the time but it really was a part I enjoyed less in Engage. But I hope by the time its DLC comes out to be more excited to get back into it and as I said last time I do want to reunite with Chrome so I am excited for that next DLC wave, so I look forward to giving it more time in what I would call an imperfect but fairly enjoyable JRPG experience. March is now here, and since I'm trying to keep time free before the big game I want to play, I wonder if small things like JRPG, anime, or smartphone games will creep into my month this time too. Regardless, February was both focused and full of many things both light and heavy that has me excited to continue my JRPG journey as this month continues. For anyone who's followed my channel for even a short amount of time, my plans for this month are probably so obvious that I don't really need to say them. But you all know, I've been saving my time for Atelier Rise of 3, the finale to the secret trilogy of the Atelier series, and I'm so excited to play it that I'm making sure that nothing gets in the way, as I'm so ready to adventure and explore and use keys in this next open field Atelier that will finish off Rise's story. That's basically my main plan, but I did already mention there's another thing that I hope to finish too. Void Terrarium 2 is still waiting on my PS5 for me, and with it being a fairly approachable 25 hours, I see no reason not to play it before getting into Rise of 3. Somewhat smaller experiences like this will probably be what I gravitate most towards for the first part of this month as I wait. Things like Void Terrarium 2 and Theater Rhythm will be good things to play without much pressure and fear of it overlapping with my main game for this month. This will unfortunately mean leaving Trails to Azure alone for just a little bit, but not without intent to get back to it as I really do need to return to Crossbell and tie up loose ends there as well, just after I do the same in Rise of 3 that I'm waiting for every day. It's a month I'm very excited to get into, and I hope everyone else is excited for too, as another good month of JRPGs gets underway with plenty of good things to look forward to. Thank you for watching this video, let me know in the comments below what you played in February and what you plan to play this month. You can like and share this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel for more JRPG content like this, and ring that bell to get notifications on whenever I post so you don't miss a thing. You can check out more videos here, and you can find me on social media, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, all at JRPG Jungle. Links to those will be in the description below. Thank you to some publishers for the codes, I'll list who sent them below. And until next time, thank you, bye!